in this session we will discuss about the ascending tracks before going to study about ascending tracks let me tell you very briefly about the spinal cord i am not going in detail i am taking the total central nervous system this is the cerebrum this is midbrain next to the midbrain dilated part pons next to the pons cone shaped or bulb shaped part medulla oblongata medulla oblongata from the lower part of the foramen magnum otherwise from the upper part of the first cervical vertebra it is continuing down as spinal cord so this is spinal cord the spinal cord extends up to the level of lower border of l1 and terminates as cone shaped structure this cone shaped structure what you call conus medullaris so from here to here this is spinal cord of course the tip of the cone shaped structure shows one pyometer extension this pyometer extension what you call phylum terminal then spinal cord shows two dilatations in the cervical region one dilatation in the lumbar region another dilatation so let me show you that dilatations in the cervical region this is the dilatation and in the lumbar region there will be one more dilatation see from here to here this is spinal cord in the cervical region it shows dilatation this dilatation what you call cervical enlargement in the lumbar region it shows one more dilatation this dilatation what you call lumbar enlargement why because in case of thoracic region spinal cord is narrow because less number of neurons are present because it has to supply only to the body wall but if you observe in the cervical region it has to supply to the body wall and it has to supply to the upper limbs then in case of lower part this spinal cord has to supply to the body wall and also to the lower limbs that's what more neurons are needed and the more neurons are accumulated over here because of that here one enlargement and here one more enlargement this enlargement what you call cervical enlargement and this enlargement what you call lumbar enlargement then from the conus medullaris so many nerves will be attached and it appears like tail of horse otherwise horse tail this structure what you call cauda equina what is the structure called cauda equina if you see the spinal cord from the anterior view you can see one fissure this fissure what you call anterior median fissure of course this anterior median fissure will be extending into the medulla also as same name lateral to the anterior median fissure you can see one more sulcus this sulcus what to call anterior lateral sulcus then if you observe posteriorly same structure should be there but the names are different because in the anterior aspect it is like a more depressed part because of that we are calling as anterior median fissure but in case of posterior part it is not extending very deep because of that only it is looking like sulcus so posteriorly posterior median sulcus i am drawing dotted lines and on either side same name posterior lateral sulcus now when you take the section of spinal cord how it will be looking like we will discuss here because we need to know where gray matter is located where white matter is located where tracks are ascending and tracks are descending because of that we need to know the transverse section of spinal cord let me draw that in the posterior part posterior median sulcus this sulcus what you call posterior median sulcus then here one more sulcus is there this sulcus what you call posterior lateral sulcus then in the anterior part this sulcus what you call antero lateral sulcus then in the anterior most part here it shows an indentation like fissure this fissure what you call anterior median fissure this is anterior median fissure this is posterior median sulcus this is posterior lateral sulcus this is anterior lateral sulcus this is the outline then if you observe in the central part you can see the gray matter this gray matter is like wings of butterfly otherwise h shaped and in the center of the gray matter you can see the canal here this canal what you call central canal so the central part is gray matter and peripheral part is white matter this white matter further divided into anterior part anterior white funiculus lateral part lateral white funiculus and the posterior part posterior white funiculus because of this sulcus and this posterior median septum here septum will be there posterior median septum because of the posterior median septum and because of the anterior median fissure 
spinal cord will be divided into two halves, right and left halves. Then this is anterior white funiculus, this is lateral white funiculus, this is posterior white funiculus. This anterior white funiculus of both sides will be united here or communicated here. This communication what we call anterior white commission. Then if you observe in the grey matter also, anterior to the central canal, posterior to the central canal. This half of the grey matter, this half of the grey matter communicated with each other. Because of that, they given the name, this part and this part, what we call anterior and posterior grey commission respectively. Anterior grey commission, posterior grey commission. So, this is the transfer section of spinal cord in brief. I am not going in detail. But if you observe, this is a posterior horn, this is anterior horn. But in case of thoracic region, you can see one more horn, that means one more lateral projection you can see. This lateral projection, what you call lateral half. In case of thoracic region and upper two lumbar segments, you can see the lateral projections also. These lateral projections, what you call lateral half. Now, what is present in the anterior horn? What is present in the posterior horn? That we will see. In the posterior horn, all sensory neurons are present. That means neurons which are taking the sensory information, those neurons are located in the posterior horn. In case of anterior horn, Motor neurons are present. The neurons which are taking the motor information, those neurons are located here. Those neurons arranged in the mass of grey matter. For those masses, we have given some names. What are those names? Part of the grey matter which is present along the posterior end of the posterior hall. This mass of grey matter, what we call marginal nucleus. What is this called? Marginal nucleus. Next to the marginal nucleus, you can see one more mass of grey matter here. This mass of grey matter, what we call substantia gelatinosa. What is this? Substantia gelatinosa. So, I am drawing like it is crying. Why it is crying? Because substantia gelatinosa is taking the pain and temperature impulses. Next to that, you can found another nucleus. This nucleus is nucleus proprius. Anatomically, what we call nucleus proprius, but physiologically what we call chief nucleus. This nucleus is chief nucleus. Nucleus proprius or we can also call as chief nucleus. Next to this, that means in front of the chief nucleus, you can found other nucleus. This nucleus what we call dorsal nucleus of Clark or dorsal nucleus of Clarkis. Dorsal nucleus of Clarkis. So, these are the different nuclei which are present in the posterior horn. What is this marginal nucleus? What is this substantia gelatinosa? What is this nucleus proprius or chief nucleus? And what is this dorsal nucleus of Clarkes? Then if you observe here, you can see the nucleus. This nucleus what we call intermediate lateral nucleus. This is what we call intermediate lateral nucleus. Then if we coming to the anterior part here there will be anterior horn cells will be present. Anterior horn cells are three types are there. Alpha cells, there will be so many alpha cells. Then there will be gamma cells and there will be Remsa cells. There will be Remsa cells. So, in the anterior horn, there will be three types of cells are present. Alpha cells, gamma cells and Remsa cells. These are the different nuclei which are present in the anterior horn. At the same time, we will try to draw the rigid lamina here. This grey matter of the spinal cord has been divided into 10 laminae. Those laminae what we call rigid laminae. Let me compare those laminae with these nucleus. This is the marginal nucleus. Here this is the laminae 1. Marginal nucleus is equal to laminae 1. Then substantia gelatinosa. This is substantia gelatinosa. This substantia gelatinosa is equal to Laminate 2, laminate 3. Substantia gelatinosa is equal to laminate 2 and laminate 3. Laminate 2 and 3 is equal to substantia gelatinosa. Then laminate 3, laminate 4 and laminate 5 is equal to nucleus proprius or chief nucleus. Then laminate 6 is equal to dorsal nucleus of Clarkis. So, posterior horn contains 1 to 6 laminae. Those are equal to 
marginal nucleus, substantia gelatinosa, nucleus proprius, and dorsal nucleus of Clarkis. Recollect once again. Lamina 1 is equal to marginal nucleus. Lamina 2 and 3 is equal to substantia gelatinosa. Lamina 3, lamina 4, lamina 5 is equal to nucleus proprius. And lamina 6 is equal to dorsal nucleus of Clarkis. Then what about this nucleus? Intermediate lateral nucleus. So, this intermediate lateral nucleus is equal to lamina 7. Then the medial part of the anterior horn is equal to lamina 8. Then lateral part lamina 9 surrounding the central canal lamina 10. So, this is about the gray matter in brief. Then if you see the white matter, through this white matter only traps are ascending and descending. Some traps are ascending and descending through the anterior white funiculus. Some traps are ascending and descending through the lateral white funiculus. And uh, some traps are ascending, only ascending through the posterior white funiculus. This is about the transfer section of spinal cord in brief. Now we will discuss about the tracks, ascending tracks. 